हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेरी वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग आज बहुत स्पेशल डे है टुडे आषाढ़ी एकादशी भी है और ईद भी है सभी के लिए आषाढ़ी एकादशी और ईद मुबारक और आज हम कर रहे हैं 56 सिक्स एपिसोड ऑफ आवर संडे लाइव डेमोस्ट्रेशन सीरीज एंड टुडे इस टॉपिक इज वेरी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड टुडे वी हैव इनवाइटेड स्पेशल पर्सन टू इंटरेक्ट विथ यू बट बिफोर दैट I would like to give you the virtual tour of the Aisar Pune. So this is a building of the Aisar Pune, and here we conduct lot of outreach activity for the students and the teachers and general public. We invite students and the teachers from the various schools and the colleges and try to show them the beauty of the science through hands-on activity and various uh, techniques. So there is a very nice court. in front of the just this main gate at if you enter in the main building there is a very nice court and what is that the aisar pune fair tomorrow science begins today means kal ki science ki shuruaat hum abhi kar rahe hain aaj kar rahe hain and this is a picture of the shrimati indrani balan science activity center and here we do lot of hands on activities for the students teachers and the public and you know using readily available material we to we try to show them how to design the experiment of the physics chemistry biology mathematics tinkering okay now so this is one of the picture of the our student workshop and you can see how children are happy and you can see the glimpse in their eyes means ek jaisa match hota hai na cricket ka उस टाइप का जो फीलिंग होता है बच्चों के चेहरे के ऊपर उस टाइप का फीलिंग हमारे क्लासरूम में होता है जब हमारे सेशन चलते हैं तीन तीन घंटे बच्चे जगह नहीं छोड़ते वी नॉट ओनली वर्क विद द स्टूडेंट वी आल्सो वर्क विद द एडल्ट अब ये टीचर का वर्कशॉप है एंड हियर वी कंडक्ट लॉट ऑफ लॉट ऑफ डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ द वर्कशॉप फॉर प्राइमरी स्कूल लेवल टीचर फॉर सेकेंडरी स्कूल लेवल टीचर फॉर द कॉलेज लेवल टीचर्स वी ऑलवेज से वी कंडक्ट द वर्कशॉप फॉर द टीचर्स फ्रॉम द टीचिंग फ्रॉम द के जी टू पी जी सो दिस इज अ फोटोग्राफ ऑफ आवर वन ऑफ द टीचर्स वर्कशॉप नाउ लेट्स मूव टू अवर आवर टूडेज टॉपिक एज आई मैंशन यू टूडेज टॉपिक इज वेरी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड वी हैव इन्वाइटेड प्रोफेसर भट्ट फॉर दिस टॉक प्रोफेसर प्रोफेसर रामकृष्ण भट्ट did his msc in organic chemistry in 1998 and won the gold medal in the karnataka university when he did his he also did his phd from the indian institute of bangalore under the supervision of a professor y chandrasekharan currently ram is a professor of chemistry at the aisar pune ram and his research group have published more than 45 papers under his guidance seven students obtained their phd ram visited many universities as a guest scientist he received outstanding faculty at the aisar pune two times without any further delay i am requesting ram please start your today's session good morning everyone i am very very happy to be here talking to large number of student though i don't see it but i came to know from mr ashok ji uh, that you know many students are there faculty or teachers and even the parents i'm very happy to talk to you that i hope we'll do a little bit of justice today as for the title science society harmony with the nature so we are all part of the nature but still we segregate ourselves as a society and that too especially the last few centuries or maybe even the millennia that you know we think you know we human beings are kind of different from the rest of the species though we all are part of this nature animal birds we are all one and we all have to learn with the harmony we have to, we, are, we all have to learn how to live you know with harmony with the nature so begin with i'm very very happy and i thank you all joining you know on sunday you know it's also 11 o'clock it's a lazy day made for many of you and i hope you will enjoy this lecture so i at, on the outset i would like to thank uh, mr ashok ji and the entire uh, aisar pune science activity media center they have been arranging such kind of interesting scientific talks to many kids and even the college students 
And today I know that students are there from the fifth grade to almost tenth grade, if I am correct. So what I am trying to do a general uh, talk, which includes science, a philosophy, and Mother Nature. We can't really separate or segregate ourselves. We all have to go together as a one single unit. That's what our philosophy has been saying. Over the years, we have forgotten, or over the years, we became much more greedy, and we only start focusing on ourselves. So let us discuss quickly, and I am pretty sure. Today's talk is pretty general. I have seen a lot of lectures from the Science Activity Center that focus on one particular topic, and I thought maybe today I'll try to give a science which emerged from last maybe 4,000 or 5,000 years across the world. But then today I would little bit stress more on Indian ancient science, also how the modern science started off. And why we have to live with harmony, and what are the troubles if we don't live with harmony with the nature? So let us get started. And this is my favorite quote. Okay, and this quote comes from a Rig Veda. I have given a very conservative estimation, 300 BC, but there are enough scientific evidences we can go back further to even 10,000 BC. But let us not bother about the time. If you look at this title, it says Avidyatam. Vijanatam, Vijanatam, Avijnatam. Okay, it says that one who thinks I know everything, I am a jnani, I know everything in this world. Rigveda says that oh, you are little avijnani because I don't think anybody knows everything. So avijnani means oh, I know, I have a hunger to learn more, I have a thirst to learn more. Means oh, avijnani means Vijanatam. He knows or she knows something. And if you say that oh, I know everything, I am a jnani. I am a vijnani. No, that means you have to think little more and say that, oh, I think he or she doesn't know much and boasting more. So this is very, very apt for all of us, students, teachers, and the parents, and for me. I have to keep learning till I die. I am a student till I die. Passion for you know, seeking always. And I today, I try to make you people, you should believe that you come from a country, Bharata, India, which has been a source of knowledge and which will be and hence we have been always asking questions and we have been seeking questions and we are always seekers hence it is a land of knowledge Bharata. So let us get into that and let me start off with the time and seed friends you are all kids and you know that time and seed which is very 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 important right. Why do you say that because you know one of the famous Subhashita it says that Kshanashaha Kanashaschaiva Vidyam artham cha sadayet, kshane nushte kuto vidya, kane nushte kuto dhanam. Kids and friends, that every minute, every second is so important for all of us. You can't waste your time, right? You're all in fifth standard or tenth standard. Yes, you need to relax, you need to enjoy, you have to fun. But time, once it lapses, you can't get back time. Hence, we say, oh, time and tide waits for none. Kalaya taspai namaha means time is so important for all of us. Every moment you should learn. And same time, it says that don't waste the kana. Particles means, you know, the rice beads, gehu. So, the, the you know, the, our farmers work so hard day and night, you know, they work and then they get their food and that food makes us to leave. Hence, we should respect that and if you lose that, Artha, money is not there. So hence, this is the first advice to all of you. Now, this is something very interesting, right? When we say, oh, youth of India, when we say youth icon, we always talk about Swami Vivekananda, science and spirituality, seeking to know and realize more. So let us let me not get too much into details of this. But then Swami Vivekananda said, modern humanity should combine the science and materialism with spiritual culture or for a sustainable civilization. Spiritual does not mean that you know you have to be religious altogether, but you have to introspect yourself, do good things, do not harm others, do not harm nature and keep on introspecting yourself so that you are looking within rather than looking all the time outside. Because materialism, materials are necessary, materials gives comfort for all of us, but in that we also become greedy. Whatever you need it, you save it. But more than that you require, then we become greedy. Look at all the animals. Animals don't save more than they require. Animals eat, they, let us say tiger attacks and eats and it is happy 
and he will leave for few months without taking food. But we human beings, we eat every day, but we store also, right? So this is a very typical nature of human being, and we should think from the you know the larger sustainable civilization point of view. That's what our especially Indian civilization philosophy stressed: live with harmony, respect the river, respect the earth, respect the wind. This comes from the philosophy that we should treat the water as mother because. indirectly keep it neat and clean that is your water if there is no water no food if no food you can't survive then it's like a chain it's a cycle it call it that's called dharma chakra so now the same time einstein says very clearly science without religion i would prefer more of let us say uh, the virtues and the values is lame and religion without science is blind why it may be apt for all of us okay can we can't we live only with science we we'll look into that little later why we have to be uh, moral why we have to think in a larger perspective all of us know friends that you know sts cycle science technology and you know society so society at large has lot of human beings animals birds and the nature is there surrounding us or you can think we are in that nature okay so mostly we think okay nature is surrounding us you know i am in the lap of the beautiful nature maybe i am part of that nature so social values social needs diseases or problem environmental issues are there and scientists across the world they try to target that oh there are problems for our, in our society we have diseases we have issues how do we solve it so we start solving those problems try to overcome those problems then what happens oh it becomes a basic research slowly this basic research starts becoming applied science and applied or translation research it becomes technology and innovation right and then it reaches to again the society again society's problem goes to scientists and this is like a sts cycle or a cycle and we all have to bound by that and we have to follow that and that is called stem you know science or let's say mathematics science engineering and technology technology is the last tip because oh it is the outcome or the fruit of that you know basic science if you look at this ambulance i think students are smart enough you are all very smart students i know look at this ambulance who is important here let us say there is a patient in your society or nearby home suddenly he or she got a cardiac arrest you have to rush to the hospital ambulance comes into the picture imagine now ambulance goes all the way to hospital and nurse will look into oh when she or she has to go for a immediate surgery and before that some scanning will be done mri scanning or you know ultrasound then they say no no he ha- or she has to go for surgery immediately doctor comes into the picture starts doing surgery but medicine has to be given it should not bleed further then after the surgery stitches and then you give the medication antibiotics look into all these things starting from the ambulance who is important shall we say ambulance played the major role that means automobile engineering comes into picture or oh automobile uh, the bus is there but the diesel is not there how he can run no diesel is there bus is there ambulance is there but driver is not there oh driver is not important yeah even he is important physics law comes into picture mechanical engineering is there electrical engineer is there driver himself is there fuel is there nurse is also important for us not only doctor then the scientist who made the medicine to stop the flowing of the blood and post make sure that you know you heal if the scientists are important medicinal chemists are important doctor the great surgeon who did a great surgery he is also important now which is important everything is important in this life so nothing is you know superior or inferior we are all part of the same game because mother nature never differentiates physics chemistry biology mother nature for her everything is same harmony but we cannot comprehend all the subjects friends hence we start try to master one subject and hence we say oh i am a mathematician i am a chemist i am an organic chemist subdivision happens but however mother nature doesn't differentiate so hence you should try to learn one subject maybe in depth but you should have the peripheral knowledge of other subjects too so that you can start connecting other subject and connect the dots and you may start enjoying it more let us go further scientists engineers are working at the background so now this is louis pasteur or louis pasteur so what he says very clearly that does not exist a category of science 
to which we can say, oh, this is applied science or this is a basic science. It's like a science or basic science is like a root of a tree and the applied science of the technology is like a fruit of the tree. So technically it's all same, you can't really differentiate, right? So now learn how to enjoy your science or enjoy the subject that you study, whichever the subject and develop a good scientific taste. Learn enough to get, get excited. For example, like if you don't know anything about let us say chemistry, if I say anything a new discovery in chemistry, you will not get excited, isn't it? For example, if you talk to a farmer and if you talk to him about the rocket science or you talk about you know, advanced research, he may not get excited because he does not know that subject. But you talk to him regarding the farming, talk to him saying fertilizer, oh he will get excited, oh I did this modification, do you know I got a better crop because he gets involved because he has certain knowledge. So hence, develop certain knowledge, have some knowledge in you that you get excited, oh this is something better than what I know. So let us go further, relationship of humans or animals or birds and the molecules. We are inseparable. See, I am surrounded by molecules, nitrogen, oxygen in air, water I am drinking that is molecule. My body has a lot of biopolymers, protein, nucleic acid, carbohydrates, you can think about oligocarp, oligomers, everything you can talk about. Where I am separate from molecules, am I having molecules or I am made up of molecules? You can think of the way you wish, but finally these molecules make you and you make the molecules again. So hence, really we are inseparable. Small molecules to biomolecules, atoms to our body and to the nature, all are interconnected, right? So now look into this, coffee, you have caffeine, milk is there, protein, casein is there, casein is there, vitamin C, lemon if you take or orange you are eating in this table, mobile you have you know materials, you talk about water, chips, potato chips, oh you have starch, you think about any place where you are sitting, your shirt has a dye, cotton, then if you have polysynthetic means synthetic material is there, where you feel that molecules are not there. Then you eat food and that can influence you, dopamine, alertness, neophrine, neoephinephrine, serotonin, all can change your moods, oxytocin you feel for you know okay, you know like in a better mood. So now molecules can make us, molecules can change our feeling. You can ask your mom, get into your kitchen after my lecture. See your mom must be having so many you know spices in her kitchen. Look at those spices we eat, especially India is known as a queen of spices. From ages, thousands of years, our food is based on the Ayurveda, most of the part of India. We rely on, we depend on the spices and these minor minor dose of this organic molecules you can see can be a medicine for you. So hence the, med the food itself can keep you a fit and fine, hence all of you should ditch the you know the junk food what, has, what you know your teachers have been teaching you because I will tell you later why junk food is not good for you. Molecules that matter for all of us, there are so many molecules friend that some of you must be having cough, cold, fever, some of you might have struggled with lot of diseases. So you might have taken many antibiotics or you know antiviral drug, so many things or painkiller, so that means Humans have been striving hard to make sure that you are disease free. But at the same time, lot of diseases are also we are realizing. That is the strength of the science. So science is trying to make our life so comfortable that okay, we are advancing. Technology is really going to higher and higher. That means we are doing something great that you know, each and every human being is more and more comfortable and he can live or she can live longer. Life expectancy can be longer. However, knowingly or unknowingly, science is like, it is just like a you know very neutral thing. For example, friends, if I give you an example, a criminal who is having a knife and a doctor or surgeon is having a knife, knife with the criminal shows that oh his intention is not not correct, oh so he may be killing someone. Whereas the, the doctor is holding a knife, we feel he is a surgeon and we respect he is going to save the life. So knife is same knife, So, but how do you use that knife makes a huge difference. Science can be used for the betterment of the human, human race, science can be used for the betterment of the nature, science can be taught and can be understood so that how do we live harmoniously with the nature, 
or science can be utilized to destroy this nature where atom bomb has been utilized to destroy the races. At the same time, the same nuclear power can generate electricity for us. So now science is neutral. Science is there for our benefit. But how you utilize this, that makes a difference, right? So for example, some of you might have heard the talk earlier by the plastics, garbage, how do we deal with the plastic? Plastic became a boon for all of us. We can't imagine without plastic these days. But however, irresponsibility of all of us to throw the plastic and the animals are eating that, water, river is getting dirty, clogged, chemicals have been thrown into the river. This is not a scientific problem, it is a problem of we humans, we are not treating that scientific aspect properly. So you kids have to learn this now and you look at the science everywhere. Philosophy teaches us you can't separate anything here, right? It's the same way. You can't really say that, oh, science is only in scientific laboratory. Come to ISA, we have chemical laboratories or biology, uh, biological, you know, great, great equipment. We have labs are there, physics laboratories are there. So you don't see science only here. Science is around you. Science is in your mom's kitchen. Science is there even if you walk, just take a few steps and see the nature. Request all your, all the kids and the parents especially, take your kids out of society. Let them see the nature. Let them see and ask questions to you people so that kid can ask more questions, seek more questions and can be more and more inquisitive, right? Like, okay, I need to know why it happens. See kids and friends, smell the flower, you have a chemistry, biology, physics. Smell, taste, see, you can do anything. Chem science is there, chemistry is there, physics is there. So now why some topics are boring and why sometimes some, some it is easy? Because sometimes you cannot relate. Whether I just I have stressed here chemistry here, but in general science, sometimes it can be exciting, sometimes it can be boring. Maybe it's sometimes the way teacher teaches, or sometimes the students may not be excited to pick it up. So as I told you, you just try to take more interest and learn and see where is science in nature, what are its applications, how it is saving all of us. I'm pretty sure you will learn more and better. So now look at this. This looks like a frog oh oh it looks like now horse so now same image can be seen in a different way different perspective so all kids please look into this that oh you have to look at the problem in a multi-dimensional way multi-directions how can i solve one problem by different approaches and that should be your aim so now some of you are in fifth grade and some of you are in tenth grade and you are all going to make a transition from now high school to college. And after college, some of you may go for science, some of you may go for commerce, or some of you may go for arts, or some of you may go for a different subject altogether to pursue your career. But you cannot run away from scientific temper. What is scientific temper? Oh, you should know of developing the mindset of asking the question. Because science started because asking the question. Even the philosophy in India is a more about questions, questioning, seeking, seeking and that's the great needs of you know the science and philosophy. That's the reason we always say doctor of philosophy after you earn your PhD but sometimes we are not less philosophical and that should not happen. So let us let me not get into this. I am saying our infrastructure, our language and the way we communicate, way we understand way we promote, like for example, science media is trying to promote these signs. Teachers, I request the teachers, take special interest to teach the students, go out of the way and teach your kids so that you know, students get excited about science and scientific temper they can develop. So now let us see, mind, control and focus and slowly I think I can show you from last 3000, 4000 years and we will come to the point how things are changing. So mind, control and focus. I am pretty sure kids, all of you are working hard sometimes. Sometimes you don't work hard. Sometimes when you work hard, your mind is not in a position to focus. That means how do you focus? You need determination, you need discipline, you need dedication, you need concentration, self-confidence, focus avoiding means focus, avoiding the distraction, habits. How do you develop? Because you are still in a place or a time where you can be trained, right? When a small plant is there, 
Have you seen that we put a stick and we tie it so that it goes straight? But then we say our, our, our seniors or elders, the philosophers told, the tree once it is bent, it's too difficult to make it straight. But the plant or the sapling can be made straight because it can take the shape. So, friends, all of you are extremely young mind, enthusiastic mind. I'm pretty sure your parents and your teachers and you yourself, can you train your brain and the mind so that you can be a good human being and of course you can be a great citizen for this country and for the whole world. So everyone has a house of four rooms, all of our brains, right? A physical room, a mental room and an emotional quotient or emotional room and a spiritual room. All of you should visit all four rooms every day. That, you know, we should exercise, you should run, you should play. Why? Because you have more oxygen, your, your exercise is giving you more energy and you become active. Mind is more active because you are taking more oxygen. Because of the exercise, a lot of hormones and other things are getting secreted. You are fit, you are burning your extra calorie. Then another room is what? Mental training. The third room is what? Emotional. Feel for the animals, birds, your parents, your friends, so that you start feeling for it. Oh, he is like my brother, he is like my sister. Oh, this animal is hungry. That emotion quotient and, and you know, we always say, you know, that you know, sympathetic and empathetic towards others. Treat like, oh, he is like me. Then finally, spiritual means asking questions to yourself, introspecting yourself. Oh, how did I do? What did I do? Did I make a mistake? So this will make you a different human being today. I'm telling you because mostly when I, as a scientist, when I come here, we only talk about science. Most of us, when we come and give a talk on science, we talk about science. I try to talk about the person's overall development, science and science within you. This should go hand in hand. I tell you why. So success and talent, I'll come to that and then you understand why I talked about uh, one has to be spiritual or emotional and also one has to think about the external achievements. Friends, I think, you know, we don't have a live session where I can't see you, I can't talk to you. Otherwise, it would have been fun. Success means a definition is different for different people. Is it success means becoming a prime minister? Success means scoring highest runs in the cricket? Success means, oh, highest centuries. Maybe today, one person has scored 35 century, 40 century, 50 century. Sorry. Then another person may come and break the record record. Or success means to be a fittest person. Or success means I am the strongest boxer. Or success means I am the biggest hero of this Hollywood or Bollywood or the Tollywood or Sandalwood or Collywood. Or success means making a lot of money. I think you should ask these questions or success means I have to become an engineer or success means I have to become a doctor or I have to become a scientist. I think you should ask a question and why I should become a scientist? Why I should become an engineer? Why I should become a lawyer? Why I should become a librarian or why I should become a journalist? Why I should come and give a talk to you? You should ask a question. I started off my talk with seeking. I started off my talk with questioning. So you should ask question, oh, why I should become scientist? What are the problems in this society? What are the diseases? And what are the issues we are facing? Oh, is there, is there any environmental issues? Oh, then I, can I become an engineer of environmental science? Or can I become a scientist to solve the problem, global warming? Can I do a bit, small amount? Oh, can I become a doctor to save people? So your success depends on question that you ask and what you have to achieve. Don't simply follow like, you know, all goats go, you know, they all walk together, one follows, all goats follow. Don't do that. Just see that why I should become a scientist, why I should become a doctor. Ask question. Then slowly, slowly, step by step, try to reach that your goal. Your goal is not to become an engineer. Your goal is to become an engineer or a doctor or a scientist to achieve something to make this country or this world a peaceful or a beautiful or to survive or to thrive. So that should be your aim and the talent comes along with that. 
So success and talent should go together and everyone has a different definition and you look for your definition. So now I am talking about the philosophy I told you right. So ancient India has been a land of knowledge. There are enough, enough uh, uh, evidences, proofs and their books. Today whatever I talk, I want to make it very clear. I am not saying anything from the WhatsApp stories or you know hereby say last 25 or 30 years I have been reading lot of scientific textbooks from ancient India, ancient China, ancient Arabs as well as Greece of the Greeks of course. This knowledge slowly slowly becomes a larger knowledge means the Newton said once that we are all standing on the shoulders of the giants. So one person achieved something we are sitting onto the shoulder of him and I can see farther much more farther. So that means we are sitting on the shoulder means each and every science from last 5000 years or so even the minute thing contribution led to a greater greater development. Hence it is like you know if you write a small uh, poem in your school magazine if they do not write your name do not you feel bad? If you do a small sketching and if they forgot to print your name in the school magazine do not you feel bad? Then why we should not talk about the people who have contributed from all across the country but especially we should ask our own people, our own countrymen did not they do? I think ancient India has been a great great resources or source of knowledge and not that we are saying that whole world knows about it but I think we should ask this question teachers especially I take a special request to all the teachers with the folded hands please put extra time to read more than what is there in the syllabus. Bring that awareness among the students that okay this country this land had given lot of scientific knowledge not the conceptual of scientific knowledge alone the practical scientific aspect of the knowledge may be of that era but our kids our students should know that okay we start did not start off from last just 75 or 100 years. We have been doing science for long time but may be holistic science may not be the reductionist approach approach may be different but we have been doing science and I think our students should know because this is going to inculcate a great spirit and the feeling among, among all the students of India especially and that too we should not ignore Chinese or Japanese science too because mostly we have been following the western science that is good and we also know the western historical scientific aspect but ancient Indian scientific aspects are missing. Uh, maybe some part is there in the NCRT and other syllabus but I think we need to teach beyond the syllabus and take time out. So this talks about laukika jnana and adhyatma jnana. So ancient India has been a land we always thought human beings cannot be taught only laukika jnana means the practical aspect of science. Practical aspect of science will give me food, money, comfort, I can really solve the problem of society, pain, anger but then can we really remove all the internal pain, the mental pain, you know many people go have a physiological or disorder but many have psychological disorders also. Many are not happy even if they have big big cars, big homes, big achievement, success is there but you know they are not happy. Their happiness comes from where? Is it because of the comfort? No. The person who is going in a very expensive Rolls Royce cars has to break if there is a animal coming in the road or if you buy a very small car, a poor car or very simple car also has to put brake. So that means happiness comes within that is your measure that is what the ancient Indian science or ancient Indian philosophy talked about look within adhyatma means see within emotional, spiritual so that you try to be happy with the available resources and available things because Mahatma Gandhiji said once that nature or the mother nature has enough for all of your needs but not for your de greed. See because we are greedy mother nature is not having enough otherwise she is give, having enough resources for all of us and we have to live a sustainable life for the future. And why we should study history of science today? I am talking about I am coming till the modern science okay if time permits. 
why should we talk about history of science? Some of you may answer the question, so that is past sir, that is so no relevance for us. So that is almost finished, now today we are in this, no. We should know our roots because I especially I told you ancient India, China, Arab and western world. Scientific advances that were made long time back, do they carry any meaning or has any relevance to the present day or the cont contemporary scientific era? That question has to be asked. I told you, I do not run away from asking questions and hence you all should ask the question, oh why it is relevant, okay? One need to know about our own scientific history with a great pride and not to gloat about okay we did every, everything you know like kind of malignant pleasure oh we did great we were the greatest people no not for that it should give you a kind of a scientific a feeling that oh history scientific history uh, we have a great pride and we can achieve again we can come back to the same cycle because if you know where you are coming from and where you are going and then you respect that place for example I am coming from let us say I am in Pune if I go to Delhi or if I go to Nasik, no, I know how Pune is and how Nasik is, how Delhi is. If I do not know where I come from, I have forgotten where I am from, then how do I appreciate the difference? How do I even understand it? Hence, friends, where you started off, history of ancient India or a history of China or a history of ancient, I mean scientific history I am talking about, will give you an idea that oh where we were. But are there any documented history, scientific history? Many people say no, it is there enough resources are there, government has put lot of books and we have so many books in the many many big big libraries, ancient oriental libraries and even if you find in Google and if you find in many many archives you will get books. However, most of them have been written in Sanskrit or Samskrita, I would prefer to call Samskrita uh, because that was the running language of those days except few other languages mostly have it had been or they have been written in Samskrita. But unfortunately most of us do not know or most of us do not read that and that is the reason maybe those books are dead for you or maybe we are dead for those books possibly because books can speak to you if you know the language. So now what were conceptualized and what were realized? So there is a big difference, right? For example, someone may say that oh that scientific concept was just a concept, it was just a mere theory, it was not practical. Yes, there were some scientific, you know, the points were conceptualized and some were just realized and some were just a theory. Yes, we can differentiate so that we get a feeling. Why history is important for scientists? As I told you, even when we publish a paper as a scientist, we give a citation from last 10 years, 20 years, 100 years, whichever is relevant sign, we start citing even 110 years back, oh, this scientist did this. And that is called history means that is called citing the, the person who did before me. Same way you cannot forget the people who did much before us or even contributed little. The, the famous Confucius from China says study the past if you would define the future. So if you want to define the future first study the past so that you would know what has happened, what I have to do further. The man who asked the question man does not mean that only boy here. A human being who asks the questions is a fool for a minute, but the man who does not ask a question is fool for the whole life. So hence my dear friends, students do not get nervous to ask a question to your teacher, ask hundreds of questions, bombard the questions with to your teacher and teachers do not get tension, trouble troubles us till we take trouble, right? So keep, keep taking the question. So hence, let us go historical perspective quickly. All of us know that in a fire possibly the first thing which human beings might have come across seeing the inferno and the animal might have been dead, he might have touched the you know the meat which is boiled, he might have touched it oh the meat tastes better when it is boiled or when it is hot, when it is cooked. So he might have learned how to cook the food now in a more civilization way now, civilized manner it started. Otherwise we were also hunters, we were also living by, by hunting the animals initially, right? I mean that is quite, quite long time ago. But then, then man started or human being started making the fire, 
taking two woods or two rocks and that has been quite ancient philosophy and ancient practice and then comes a metal because when there is a fire metal has to come into the picture because he wanted to have a tools to make things, tools to hunt the animals. So, tools came into picture, how? The metal. That means, if you see the western point of view, the metallurgy started around uh, 2000, 3000 or 4000 BCE maximum they say, but as for the enough resources in India, even looking at the excavation, our chemistry went back much before that 5000 BC or minimum estimation, much before that, but at least I can say. So, gold, copper, silver, tin, iron were known to Indians. And of course, I think all the Indians love gold, especially ladies, isn't it? I think uh, we don't have enough resources, but still we have enough gold. Everybody wants to have gold. Silver is there. And maybe your grand, grand, grandparents used to eat in the bronze plate or brass plate, especially bronze. But then have you seen some interesting things that, you know, they would have coated with something white color one. I will talk about that later. So that means ancient India and till last few years I have seen people were not using plastic or they were not using even the glasses or they were not using the ceramic. So, they were using the metals that means how the metal comes into the picture we look into that. So, let us go back bronze age smelting process it is not easy, but look at the history through the eyes of certain books or the westerners. Isolation of the copper happened only 4000 BC copper and gold alloy was made only 2000 BC. Then a prehistoric times if you talk about you know 1700 BC King Hammurabi you know they talk about the Babylonians they talk about the metallurgy and we study that Babylonians and the western entire philosophy talk about all the Greeks and Egyptians and Roman science and the and the Egyptians use the natural pigments and what about India and China and Japan and Arab I think did not we do science at that time because we have been reading the ancient Greek science or western science, why not our own science? And what was happening over here in India? What was open happening over China and Japan? Nothing was happening. They were not connected to anybody in the world. Was it necessary for the Vasco da Gama to discover India because they have to come and they have to discover? Please teachers, you have to ask this question. We were here only. Nobody had to come and discover us. They had to search the sea route when the land route was blocked and they had to search India. But however, however, ancient textbooks, many, many literatures say Indians had the trades with Egyptians, Greeks, we worked well connected with Chinese and Japanese. So, nobody could discover us. They had to come and see us because we were interdependent. So, hence please, I think we should learn, maybe we should change the way we teach Vasco de Gama. Columbus wanted to come to India because they, they had a need and they had to come here. They did not discover us. However, land route to sea route was there. In Sanskrita, we say navigation, Navagataha. It is a sea route. It is one of the ancient term and that Navagataha becomes a navigation in English. So, ancient Indian textbooks from the Vedas, we have been talking about the navigation. Let us go quickly. History of chemistry. How many of you know from India and China and Arab Western world? Rasayana Shastra when we say, oh, Rasayana Shastra means chemistry, Rasa, liquid, Shastra means a subject. So, ancient Indian philosophy says that Shastrena Rakshite Rashtre Shastra Charcha Vivartate, where then we have the land is saved by the Shastra, then Shastra can be done very peacefully. If the land is not guarded, you cannot do Shastra, you cannot discuss the philosophy or the science. So, Rasayana Shastra, Acharya Nagarjuna, one of the greatest of greatest scientists, he wrote five books, more than five books, they are available. If you read Sanskrit, you will understand that. And these textbooks are practical textbooks and they had worked on distillation, ore extractions, extraction of the metals from the ores and they talked about which place you get the metal. Yashodhara was another great chemist. Vagbhata talked about beautiful chemistry and the medicine. Somadeva talked about alloys. Distillation technique of ancient India was slightly different from its distillation te technique that we use today. Rasa Ratnakara, Rasa Radaya Manjari, Rasa Hridaya, they are all scientific textbooks and they are there. Please read if you have time or if you understand. 
the sugar technology it comes from india when the famous alexander the greek you know alexander the great what we say he came to india to conquer because of the aristotle finally you know we know the story he was defeated or you can say you know both of them mutually agreed but then he was surprised to see a jaggery which is crystallizing out and that's called sharkara he had never seen anything other than honey but indians take take that credit of making sugar and i'm telling this story not from here and there a book called fessenden and fessenden organic chemistry textbook friends you can go and see that and in that textbook it clearly gave in the history and this history comes from a history book called megasthenes indica the greeks wrote this history and hope maybe some of the indians can trust the westerners or the others who told this because sometime we question ourselves that is it true did we do that we were experts in sword rust free fillers perfumes if anybody is coming from up kanauj i think till today kanauj is a land of making perfumes or attar or ithar ayurveda ancient india has been a land of medicine and we are the first one in the world as far as i know my scientific knowledge if i'm to the best of my knowledge we mix the metals with the medicines herbal medicine and that is a great credit and why i will tell it later and then of course arabs talked about yunani medicine so we should talk about that too and we should talk about the language connection sanskrit greek and latin how it can make our learning easier so now let us quickly start the historical perspective so democritus talk about the atom a concept in the greeks view aristotle talked about the four element concept in the greeks around 400 to 350 380 bc what were india and china were doing doing what did they say did they have any philosophy are we teaching or are we discussing yes we had a philosophy and in ancient india we had five elements not just four elements and that's the greatness of india we should please think about it what is that fourth element fifth element four elements are agni fire earth bhumi jala water and the air of course vayu and the which is fifth element that is space akasha ether so can you imagine to live without space i am moving my hands because the space is there if i if you put me in a box i can't even move so the fifth element is akasha of the space the great element from india and indians always thought about time and the space so this is very very essential and look at this you know some of you might have seen as a rangoli that i have shown you here some of you know ganesha mandala we say or ganapati mandala or some rangoli they put at the home it has a beautiful meaning that one triangle is going up the sky another triangle coming down because mother nature is a prakriti and the space is a purusha purusha means not the men man means the two philosophy space can give water rain and the same river gives again it goes up as a cloud rain gives you food and that makes you all and you should make sure that make sure that take care of the nature so that nature will give you the rain again and you can survive such a beautiful concept that you are in harmony with the space you are in harmony with the nature you are not away from the nature so please think about this so now what we were doing it there was a great great sage or a scientist you can call him or you can say think of philosopher if you don't want to call him as a scientist no problem but there are lot of scientific books called vaisheshika sutra surya siddhanta please read or please take time out to download if it is there or not whatever i am saying anything is wrong please look into that if you can't understand it okay download is that book called surya siddhanta is there oh is there any book called vaisheshika sutra oh is there any book called bhaskaracharya's book is there oh wow, bhaskaracharya what bhaskaracho what lila oh what is there please look into that read it the kanada his name is not really kanada he wrote a book called vaisheshika sutra and kanada means he was talking about kana particle anu and he is the one of the earliest person likely much before than democritus talked about anu paramanu yes it was a just a philosophical point the same way democritus did not talk about atom means what we understand atom today but the westerners based on the atom concept of the democritus the coined the word atom they took 2000 years or more than that to prove atom exists yes atom can be proved 
but then they believed in that philosophy they looked into the westerners looked into their own ancient philosophy are we doing that or are we just saying that we did not do anything and dumping our, or we are not interested to see what it is right can't we just have a look into this if i give you a two sweets one jalebi and maybe one rasgulla you have to taste both then you say which is better for you no without tasting how can i say there is it's not tasty you have to look into this first and say oh there is nothing this is garbage or you say oh this is so much big thing i did not know how do you realize that without seeing this hence i am telling this even if you go back to any literature democritus and canada get the first respect and great respect they talked about a smallest thing which is existing yes maybe things have changed now which is indestructible things might have evolved we know that now atom has proton neutron electron maybe we can further go down you know we all know that right but then imagine almost 2500 to 3000 years ago someone has to talk about everything is made up of smallest particles this itself is a great thing and we should remember them let us travel back to time we all talk about sindhu civilization or indus valley civilization or harappa mohenjadaro or rakhi gadi and we talk about all these things and many people told saraswati river is a mythical one no it has been proved it indeed flow indeed and indeed it is still flowing as a remote sensing image show that it's all scientific you please look into that and what we get from the harappan time or vedic time we have beautiful scientific literature i mean beautiful scientific you know discovery you can see they had a great drainage system they had the matrix system they were the first one to make button on your shirts they were really good in making the bronze brass and shockingly you all should be proud of your country i think as far as i know based on all my knowledge they were the first one to make the eat means what brick so ancient indians knew how to make brick from the mitti don't you think that is not a technology it is a technology and at that time nowhere in the world at least excavation point of view we did not get the bricks they only used stones that means ancient indians knew the how to make bricks how to make many interesting things dye pigments and you can see i have shown you here bronze sculptor the lady who is having you know lot of bangles and you know in many places in rajasthan and that part of sindhu saraswati and that side in western part of india many people still wear the long you know chain of bangles and that quite continuous civilization or the culture till exists today so now we can look into clearly how ayurveda and the variety of minerals came into existence and mixed and became a great contribution if you go back the metals i told you rigveda upanishads talk about the metals now i have been following certain parts i i know little bit i am not an expert but i know sanskrit a little bit and i know that rigveda do talk about many metals for example gold swarna hiranya swajata rajata is silver you know rajata copper tambre or tambe you know some maharashtra some surname is called tambe is there tambra lokhande loha loha bhasma you no know, loha bhasma ka iron iron bhasma iron then you know sinchana means casting the word is there for the use practical usage so atharva veda talks about rajata tin means trapu lead means sisa we have but mendelik mendelev block when we teach mendelev table sorry mendelev table when we teach we only talk about the what we know what have been taught can't we talk about equivalent word what we knew in india japanese talk about it chinese talk in their own language why not we talk about our own language and say okay mercury means padarasa in indian language or in sanskrit of course there are many other languages use different word later but then why did they call padarasa because a liquid which can settle at the bottom pada food rasa liquid settles at the bottom is pada rasa because they might not knew it is 13.33 gram per centimeter cube but they knew it is very dense they utilize this mercury for many interesting medicines making for the mercuric oxide and other thing and in a small dose maybe but they knew 
metal. They knew how to extract. They knew practical aspect of this. And then Anu, Paramanu and many interesting things we'll talk about later. So now Ayurveda when I talk about, I'm pretty sure kids, you all know about, you might have heard about Shushruta, right? And Charaka, I'm pretty sure you might have studied. But do you know Shushruta and Charaka utilize the metals for the medicine? Do you know what did he say? Usages of herbs, roots and plants and the metals and phosphorus means Ranjaka, means oh, which can Ranjati, means oh, metal which can entertain you. Metal, if not metal, I'm the I mean element which can entertain you. Why? You know, if you see, you know, if you go to crematorium ground at night, they say don't go because both breath hai, light hota hai, because bones contain phosphorus and they burn in the air and hence it ranjati. It gives you entertainment. Phosphorus, gandhaka, sulfur, it smells gandhaka. They talked about the nature and they called padarasa, yashada basma or yashada means zinc and ancient Indians should get the great credit of smelting zinc. Why not? Others did not do? Yes, Chinese did, Greeks did. But why Indians should get a credit for extracting zinc from the Rajasthan's, you know, the river bedside? Till today we have an excavation site because zinc, when you are smelting at 900 degrees centigrade, it, it evaporates quickly. And ancient Indians came up with an idea of condensing that so that, you know, collected zinc and they in enhance the yield. Now coming to this point, why Shashrata used these metals? And Sushruta gave a very more interesting poetic way, Acharya Charaka and Sushruta. Of course, the Charaka Maharshi I am talking about now, Charaka Rishi or Charaka Saint you can say because he talked about the medicine and his Charaka Samhita is a scientific text. You should be surprised to see they talk about the different organs very, very precisely. That means they might have opened up. But we know that Grace Anatomy, we know that Leonardo da Vinci who used to go in the night and you know, dig the grave and take the dead body and cut it and open and drew beautiful anatomical figures. But ancient Indians did not know about it. Yes, we know because they talk about it. Maybe they did not beautifully draw it, but they knew certain in organs. No, may not be all, but they know internal organs very well. So now, one day, Charaka was sitting below the tree. Students, why I am telling this story? Two things from here. Charaka was all the time he was worried about how to make this world disease free. So he was thinking all the time, crazy, crazy, thinking about how to make disease free, how to make everybody is happy, healthy. So why a moral is there in this story? He was sitting below a tree thinking, thinking. One day, below the tree he was sitting, a, a suddenly a bird came, coil, okay, and sat on the branch of the tree and started saying, Kohruk, Kohruk, it started singing. Shushruta has been thinking only about the medicine. He thought, it is his imagination, that bird is asking me, Kohuruk, Kohuruk means in Sanskrit, Kaha Aruk, who is disease free? Who is disease free? Kohuruk, Kohuruk. He, he is imagining. Of course, bird did not ask him, but then he says that, oh, he is asking me, Kohuruk, Kohuruk, Kaha, kaha Aruk, Ruk is a word for the roga. In Sanskrit, the ruk is a dhatu or the etymology comes from the ruk to roga, rugana. So now he says, oh, hitabhuk, mitabhuk and ritabhuk is saharuk, sohruk, soruk means he says, hita, eat the food which is healthy for you, hita, not because it is tasty for you. It is a charaka's advice to all of you. Hitabhuk, bhuk matlab only bhuk ni khao. Mita bhuk, limited quantity, itna pet bharke mat khao. Don't eat too much. Ritu bhuk, eat the fruits and the vegetables and the pulses as for the ritu, as for the season. Then you will be saha aruk, he will be always healthy. So hence my dear friends, kids, that last 2500 years ago also, or sorry, uh, last so many years, Ancient Indians have been telling, eat which is healthy for you, not tasty for you. Hence, they brought the masalas, mixing spices, digestion after eating soap, putting lemon on your food. It's all ancient Ayurvedic preparation or putting garlic little bit or putting, you know, dhaniya. Why? This all will try to make sure that you have a digestion, you have a better absorption. They might have understood that. Maybe scientifically they might not have proved it, but they knew that it works. 
that is good enough, right? So now this book talks about different, different things, vata, pitta, kapha, means transformations, what happens with the stability, lubrications, we are all made up of, we always say we are brahmanda, that is pindanda, means as universe is there, you are also a reflection of the universe, pindanda, means look at the earth, earth, how much water is there on the earth, around 79% or 71%, you can vary, how much is in your own body? same percentage almost. That means you are a reflection of the same universe that is the ancient Indian concept. What are the dhatus? They talk about bone marrow, they talk about bone, they talk about different parts, they talk about pancha dhatu. So, this is something beautiful. Now, comes up to Acharya Shushruta. Acharya Shushruta talk about surgery. I think some of you students, if they are from Pune or Maharashtra, you should be, have a special pride because this Shushruta, a great man, maybe 2500 BC, much older than that, but anyway, he should be credited for rhinoplasty of what is today nasal or nose surgery. When the British were in India, there used to be Marathas and the British war or the Mysore British war. So, they used to chop off the nose and the, they used to get, you know, the soldiers used to lose nose because this is kind of disrespect to show. And after a few months, if they see the soldier, they had some artificial nose. They were shocked. How come? This I am not making a story. I am giving you all the back references. You should see that. This was published in Gentleman's Magazine 1794. So now what happened? The British were shocked to see that how come these Indians are giving the artificial nose? And the, the famous doctor called Carpew, he learned with the Pune based Vaidya or a doctor who was sitting on the, you know, in the our Tulsi Bagh area possibly, where the, our fort is there, Khila. These people were doing the surgery, you will be shocked. And then he gets trained by two years and he goes to the West UK, London. These are all published, okay. I am not making any stories. You should read this. And Carpew, 18, he shows the first surgery in the UK, London. Say that, no, I can do no nose surgery. The Western world did not know what is surgery. The surgery also word comes from the Sanskrit word surgery. It is very interesting. Please look into this. And they are the first time they opened the 18, I think 1801, they opened the Royal Society of Surgery. Possibly it is a coincidence? You think so? I do not know because Karp Q publishes in the gentleman's magazine that we learned this rhinoplasty from India. So, hence it is called Indian rhinoplasty till today and that means may not be the plastic surgery that you know today may not be that possibly, but at least initiation and the showing that artificial nose, pulling the skin from the forehead and they used to pull out and put it on the nose and they used to stitch it. The skin was natural from your own forehead, the topmost skin. That means that is a skill and whole world knows that okay surgery started from India and we should know about this too. Why we can't teach this? That is our pride. We should know about it. However, we should not gloat about the past. We should do much better in the future. So, I will not go into details. Look at the ancient metallurgy from India. Alloys, bronze, brass, mixing of copper, zawar, oldest center, in the, I told you zinc. I told you we are, should get credit of smelting the zinc and distillation and the condensing the zinc. Look at the site of this, these are all ancient signs, they have been published. Look at the beautiful architecture here from the Hoysala sculpture at Belur, Karnataka. Look at the minute carving of this idol and she is called Madanika holding a mirror. Look at the fine carving. This fine beautiful carving shows that they had a fine tools, metals. And look at the mirror, I am showing you here and this is Dr. Sharada Srinivasan who published this in 1998. And she worked a lot and she went to Kerala because in Kerala there is a place called Aramula, I guess. And they still make a mirror, not a glass mirror, bronze mirror. And ancient Indians knew how to make a mirror which is made up of bronze by, by mixing different amount of tin and what? You know that how to make bronze means mixing the different amount of tin that is called alpha bronze, beta bronze, delta bronze. 
they might not know this alpha beta delta that are new terminologies but they knew how much amount of tin has to be mixed so that you will get a different bronze and this is well documented well published well we have an idea very clear and that too we indians had copper enough but our tin resources are very little how do you find out where is tin I want to ask all your students and the friends and teachers or any parents, any scientist here, ask me. Ask me to go and find out gold for me. Can I find out now? Ask me to go and say, sir, you search a, a tin ore for me, sir. How will I search? You will say, I need a tool, spectroscopic tools. I need special tools to search either oh, copper ore either hai, or oh, mitti either hai. Is mitti mein zinc hai, is mitti mein gold hai. How do I say that? How did they know then? thousand years ago how did they know that in rajasthan zawar bed i get zinc how do they know that in southern india they get the tin how do they know which part i should get copper don't you think it is not scientific aspect of ancient india they were practical science practical chemistry but however we don't teach this enough in schools and students don't know our, our own a great ancient science and great ancient history the nagarjuna i talked about he did wrote so many books and look at what the Iranian historian wrote, Al Biruni. He says that he described him very famous Indian metallurgist and a, a representative. Sorry, there's a D is there, a representative and a representative of Indian alchemy. And they came and learned from Nagarjuna and the university called, of course, Nalanda and Takshashila. We lost that. Of course, now Nalanda is reviving. So now there are enough evidences we have. The, in, they are all working for immortality or they wanted to make gold out of something. Anyway, let us go quickly look at the iron pillar from the Delhi which is rustless pillar and you feel it is by fluke? No, they did not make anything by fluke because Indians knew very well how to make the sword which is sharpest and also how to make the pillar which is rust free. They knew how to differentiate by enough quantity of carburization and they found out this and you can see that Arabs talk about that again. Arab scientist Al Idrisi talks that the Hindus means the geographical term Himalayam Samarabhyam Indu Sarovara Tatam. Anybody who stays from the Himalaya to Indu Sarovara, that Indian Ocean, they are all called Hindus because geographically you are a land of Hindustan. And that's the reason Arabs call them the Hindus because we had Jains, we had Buddhists, and we had different uh, people who believed in different faith. So, Hindus excel in the manufacture of iron and the preparation of those ingredients along with, the, with it fused to obtain Indian steel called Hindvi steel. Do you know this Hindvi steel? Or you know, always of Hindve, Hindvi steel because this come from ancient uh, land in, in the southern part called the Chalukyas. They work lot on steel that is called in Kannada, it is called Ukku and in Tamil, it is Urukku and this became wood steel when British took it. Please search it. British almost, I should not now blame, but well documented at least some of the history clearly shows that we were bar to make steel. We have lost that now science how to make stainless steel. It might not have looked like the shining steel today, but it did not get rust and that is called wood steel and wood steel comes from the word ukku from Kannada and urukku in Tamil. So, please look into this how beautifully the Rasa Samuchaya talks about this. How did they make three different kinds of iron munda wrought iron, tikshna crucible steel that means kanta shining steel or iron that means they have definitions for this that means they might have done science. So, Average composition varied, let us not go into that. Look, I have shown the map of Rashtrakutas and Chalukyas and look at this if you go to Maharashtra's Ellora, Ajanta. Some of you students, even if you are not from Maharashtra, please come and see Rashtrakutas, the great art of you know Ellora's carving. One rock from the top to down approach, chiseling the entire rock into temple without any single crack. Don't you think it is an amazing architectural wonder? Can we do it today? And some people say it's aliens came and did. Aliens came and did only the Shiva temple or the Jainist temple or the Buddhist temple. I don't know why, but I think it is scientific glory. 
look at the carving look at the pillars how precise it has been cut that means they had metal tools they had art that means everyone from the society contributed to this not one society right everybody became one society lived harmoniously to make this beautiful wonder and why not this is the biggest wonder in the world because there is nowhere in the world monolithic such a largest architectural wonder is there i am pretty sure today we have lost that art and we should at least talk about this and we should not go and write their friends you know taking a chalk piece and writing your name so and so love so and so that should not be written on this temple please respect the the hands of those artisans who made this taking hundreds of years this is what i was talking about agastya samhita you know interestingly there is someone called acharya agastya he wrote a book called agastya samhita beautiful book and please see that i am reading in sanskrit i will you no need to read that samsthapya mrannmaye patre tamra patram susapskritam means take a mitti ka pot or ardhan pot and keep tamra patra means copper plate so dust you put it and i was shocked i was talking to a very famous electrochemist and he told me till today's battery they use saw dust almost similar and he shows one ardhan pot copper plate copper sulfate because we have a copper sulfate in india we had and we have sanskrit word for that sanskrit word and wet saw dust zinc amalgam and it can give you a little bit of electricity and in you you to please see it there are people who have reproduced this and it glows a little bit bulb at least led bulb glows but can't we at least talk about this there is a book agastya samhita which is pretty pretty old they made a bit of electricity isn't it not exciting for all of us let us say it might not be lighting the whole society so city but can't we think about that that oh they did it and our students should know teachers you should also know that our parents should push them to learn this along with the modern science we should know our ancient part so let us go ahead you can this is the kanoj i was talking about the distillation technique is different look at the flask which is immersed in the water and the one flask is getting hot and ancient indian philosophy as well as the scriptures like vedas talk about the making the perfumes for worshiping gods sandalwood paste and different paste and different perfumes and there comes okay how to make perfume of course this is all across the world people made perfumes obviously germany is famous and france is famous but ancient india we had uh, perfumes shampoo and the shampoo itself comes from the sanskrit word champu and when the champi they were doing in ancient india especially even 17 not in ancient now also people do in india that we do champi with oil massage and shikakai and the british thought first they are you know oh, why this indians are massaging their hair with oil and then you know shikakai then they understood this is the good for blood circulation and hair grows better and then it became c h a m p u champi became a shampoo shampoo so now we need a shampoo with chemicals we may not be interested in a shampoo with ayurvedic or the or the or the natural herbal or you know natural system alcohol has been mentioned in ancient textbook got many and they talk interestingly alcohol is called as cola i don't know alcohol and cola i don't know it's very interesting and soap is mentioned anyway so now let us go quickly i don't know anybody knows about this in the, if you go to rasta pet or you know on corner if you take your copper vessel or if you take your brass vessel there will be someone who will put a kalai karna you know has have you heard about kalai today nobody bothers about kalai makers i feel bad for them because you are using melamine plastic which is uh, good some sense but it is bad for some sense and this kalai making comes from a book called kalya lepa called shiva tattva ratnakara keledi basava somewhere in the karnataka 11th century they found this book kalya lepa kalya lepa means they knew how to cover the tin on the brass so that using ammonium chloride you know now sagar they say you can ask them and that means that's chemistry they coated the tin to the bra so that tin is not as reactive as copper hence if you put the dahi or if you put acidic compound it will not react don't you think it's not a chemical experiment yes it is why we don't teach it it is not a science it is science but why we can't talk about that in the school or to the students they should know but those people are just doing their bread and butter they're just but i feel bad because it's a great art and this art mixed with the the persian art when the khiljis were ruling in the 
the northern Karnataka and southern Maharashtra called Bijapur Sultans, okay, when they were there, in the fort, they used a special mitti and the, uh, the famous Moinuddin Hasan Chisti, who brought from the Persia the beautiful art, and it's called Bidri Ver, Bidarka Ver, Bidri Ver, and you can see a beautiful art where they are mixing the, the metal chemistry or the chemistry from India, ancient India, with the Persian art. This is the beautiful amalgamation of Indian chemistry and the Persian art and became a Bidri Ver. So now slowly, slowly you can see the another great credit goes to Mysore for the rocket. You will be shocked to see the rocket technology comes from India. The fuel or the rocket fuel, maybe some people say, of course, it's a China, but rocket undoubtedly comes from India. Why? Because when the Mysore's and the Mara, uh, Mysore's and when the British were having a war four times, all the times British initially they lost. And then one person comes and looks into this that why we are losing and they understood oh this Mysore Tipu Sultan and Wadayars have the rockets and they are shelling the rocket with us. Finally they win over and they take over the Bangalore some part is there where they used to store Mysore King that's uh, Tipu used to store the rockets and then he takes it we should give the credit to the British and his name is Congreve and this Congreve studies this rocket their rocket was only going for only few kilometers and they were loading only few cages and he studies for enough time and he comes up with a very bigger rocket and he called, they called it as Congreve rocket and he patents it. But he does not give any credit to Mysore or the Tipu or the Odayers, Mysore Odayers. And then there were a lot of resistance in the, in the British. They told, oh, you are copying your, this is well documented story. I'm not saying anything new. And then finally he publishes and he says that, oh, he says that, okay, this concise account and origins and the progress of rocket system, he publishes a books and he grudgingly acknowledged that he borrowed this design of rocket from India. So now credit goes to British, but credit does not go to Mysore, credit does not go to Tipus or Wadayars or the people who made rocket technology using the ancient Indian chemistry and using the Chinese possibly fuel or the you know what we say today pataka or that we do not talk about. So please go to encyclopedia or any books any textbook you see Congreve rocket and that history is Mysore rocket. Mas. Now how did he arrived based on a Mysore rocket but Mysore rocket has been ignored or Mysore rocket has been forgotten from the history of scientific textbooks even in India. Is it fair? I think we should introspect ourselves. Anyway, and I should respect the great professor Acharya Chand Prafulla Chandra Ray, a greatest Indian who slowly you know, came all the way from the ancient India to the modern India and he is the first one to build a chemical industry. And I have taken many things from his own book called Hindu Chemistry Volume 1 and Volume 2. Deshpande and Vijay Jayant, you know, Deshpande, Vijay Jayant, Deshpande's book, History of Chemistry and Alchemy of India. Please read, many textbooks are available. And that will give what I have taught. So, how the modern chemistry started? The, if you look at the ancient science, especially the western science, there is a big gap from the Aristotle, the Democritus, that we do not have, I do not know, at least to my best of knowledge, I did not find too many scientific achievements somewhere in the 2nd AD, 3rd AD, 4th AD, 5th AD, you do not find from the western science. Whereas in India, we have. 5th AD, 7th AD, 8th AD, we have, or which is, you know, whereas they have Democritus, Herodotus, you know, those things you have, but suddenly there is a gap, and suddenly it's, they start from 13th, 14th, 15th century, industrial revolution starts. And all of them were interested in alchemy, means make gold out of something, make gold, make gold out of something, right? So now, why gold? Because everybody was interested in gold because gold is a real money, you know, even after demonetization, Notes might have gone, but gold is there. So, gold has a value. So, everybody wanted to make gold, but the people who made gold by mixing here and there called alchemists. But then the real modern approach started when you asked question. Again, I started off with the seeking question, seeking for knowledge, questioning. They started asking, oh, why this color is changing? Why this, you know, one gram became only 300 milligram in the product? Why this gas is evolving? Why the flask is becoming hot? Why the flask is becoming cool? This kind of common sense approach led to so many questions and that became a modern science. You can see Lavoisier, 
he is one of the first person who rejected the phlogiston theory, who rejected the a theory called phlogiston means the alchemist believed every component has to burn if there is an element called phlogiston. He told there is nothing called phlogiston, it has to combustion has to happen, oxygen you need it, fuel you need it, of course all three in a triangle it will catch a fire and he told rejected phlogiston theory. What was the outcome of that? He was beheaded by Gulliton because he said you are going against the theological idea that phlogiston is not there. Luckily, India also questioned a lot of philosophy and scriptures. I think Indians have been seeking, I think at least to the best of my knowledge, none of them were hanged or slaughtered or you know they lost their life because they questioned the philosophy. Because we always started off with the laukika jnana and adhyatmika jnana which has to go hand in hand which would leave with the harmony, nature, nature and that is very interesting. Shile worked lot, he discovered lot and he died because of the poisoning. But shall we say he was fool he died because of he was tasting his compound or shall we say he did a greatest of great discovery. Look at the Robert Bunsen that Bunsen burner you see he lost his eye but he came up with the Bunsen burner that led to spectroscopic evidences or for spectroscopy further. Davy damaged his eye by poisoning and other things he died but his student got a chance Faraday. Michael Faraday became the greatest of great scientists again discovered benzene we know that my Faraday effect. How? Because of the dedication. So students you have to be dedicated, you have to ask questions, you have to dream big. I told you even the Madam Curie I can talk about. The dreams have discovered something but to get a dream of a science also possibly we have to keep thinking about the same topic. The way Charaka was asking how do I make healthy person means your brain has to be keep on thinking about some topic. How do I solve this problem? How do I take this? Maybe if you are thinking again and again certain topics or certain problems in the society maybe you will one day get a solution for that. Look at the two centuries left and right in you know, a pasture came up with the idea of pasteurization came up with the idea of enantiomeric separation and then he found oh chiral compounds exist in our body in the nature two asymmetric compounds can be separated mother nature makes one molecule so energy specifically why. So this is so beautifully starts and now slowly slowly understanding of one compound one chiral carbon oh one chiral carbon chiral means karaha means hand chiral means handedness oh each molecule if has one chiral center has two enantiomers and it can have a different different properties in your body. So one molecule can be a medicine another say one isomer can be medicine its mirror image can be deadly poison for you. So that knowledge starts for us starting from where we started around 4000 BC and we are come up to almost like 1900. So you can see how slowly slowly starts I told you sorry something has happened here dreams and discovery I told you know that Elias Howe he was always thinking about how do I make a needle sewing needle where the needles hole should be in the front not in the back. He did not get that idea okay initially he did not get this idea but he was sure even he was tailor. So whenever he was to do stitching he used to get pricked and he used to get pain and he was always feeling that how do I solve the problem he never got an idea. In the dream it is a story that you know a tribal people come and try to kill him that when will you make a sewing machine and then he saw to his close to his eye a spear with a hole in the front and he got up and said ah I got an idea needle should have a hole in the front and this is a story from the Elias Howe like James Watson dreamed and there are many others like Ramanujan used to get lot of equation in his dream these are all their stories and the even the recent Larry Page Google. So look at this animals have their own chirality handedness. So what I want to tell you friends now so we can go further and we will stop here because finally what I wanted to say is we are not different from the nature. I have talked about now entire 2000 to 2300 historical historical background from India, China, even the Greece. Our Indian philosophy always says ano badraha kratavo jantu vishwataha let me hear good things noble thoughts from all different directions. So we say that sangachadvam samvadatvam I will not read this you can read samvo manasa janata means come together let us speak in a same voice. Let us all our mind be all of in harmony 
this is comes from the uh, veda sutra called aikya sutra aikya mata one all of us are one we are not different we are in with the harmony with the nature let us go together let's all our minds be one united we should not have a different different or uh, different opinions are good but we should not have a different mind for destructing the world we should be united for the harmony of the nature science should be for our comfort science should be for our growth science should be for the betterment of the society at the same time i told you the example of the knife science should not be for destroying our own nature thank you friends i think i should stop here i am sorry if i have taken more time because i was not following the clock i really thank you for patiently hearing for such a long time maybe it's more than an hour i really thank you all and uh, i am pretty sure if you have a questions please mail it to us we'll try to get back to you and i hope i try to do a lightly different way i did not go by taking one concept in the science i can do that i can always come back to science media center and take one topic and give a talk but my aim was or my aim is that please bring an awareness among yourself that you are not different from the nature you should be a good human being first you should have a good moral you should be a good citizen of this country and then you are a good citizen of this whole universe or even whole world so you can contribute positively not negatively using the science so and when someone says science teaches this and that no science does not teach anything it's science experience that experiment teaches you not a science does not teach it's anubhava what we say feeling it experiencing it teaches you not the textbook teaches but it will not give you that experience one need to make the deduction good morning everyone i am very very happy to be here talking to ji uh, that you know many students are there faculty or teachers and even the parents i'm very happy to like why they can glow there's so much science is everywhere so science cannot be left you have to live with science but you have to have a eye to see the science that is we say in philosophy yatha drashti tatha srashti your drashti your vision is your science or your nature or your srashti prakriti so all the best friends i'll stop here and i'm very sorry if i have taken more time and i have troubled you on sunday and i hope i could do a little justice maybe i hurried here and there thank you so much so thanks once again thanks once again to ashok ji and science media for arranging all these things putting lot of efforts i sincerely appreciate all your hard work and i thank i sir pune for making this you know wonderful platform and making this happen thank you so much thanks